So this hate crimes amendment is a substantial overreach by Congress, I do believe. It is not carefully crafted or narrowly tailored. Unlike the historic civil rights statute, it seeks to federalize violent non-economic conduct that is local in nature and has little or no federal nexus. The Supreme Court has held that violent conduct that does not target economic activity is among the types of crimes that have the least connection to Congress's commerce power. However, this is precisely the sort of violent non-economic conduct that this amendment would federalize. If this approach were permissible, it would put Congress on a path to rely on the Commerce Clause and legislate any criminal law it wants. When it comes to criminal law, Congress would no longer be a body of limited, enumerated, listed powers, but would have plenary power to criminalize any and all conduct that is already criminalized by the states in clear violation of our historical policy of not taking over state and local law enforcement. There's still a lot of complaints over the drug laws uh, aggressively prosecuted when I was a federal prosecutor. Uh, and many think that was an overreach, but drugs come in almost vast majority from outside the country. They're moving uh, as interstate commerce and impact the society in a way that uh, the courts have upheld it. But there's still intellectual criticism and concern about it. The sponsors have, but in this case, uh, you don't have that kind of dramatic nexus. And you also uh, lack the, um, uh, the evidence to suggest it's not, that these cases are not being effectively prosecuted. So the sponsors, uh, the sponsors have also tried to ease constitutional concerns by citing the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. The 13th Amendment provides Congress with the limited authority to abolish, quote, all badges and incidents of slavery in the United States. I hope my colleagues are not seriously attempting to argue that assaulting someone because of their religious or, uh, views or gender is tantamount to slavery. The 14th Amendment and 15th Amendments apply only to state action, and since we have already established that states are vigorously prosecuting these actions and not ignoring them, I don't think this is a valid approach. And finally, I, I think that I would note that uh, the legislation raises questions concerning the constitutional imperative that there be equal justice under law. Is there a, a legitimate, just, justifiable reason to punish one rape differently than another rape simply because someone decides the first rape was committed out of hate or actually uh, because of the gender of the victim? I think they would, the victims would, would say uh, the same thing. The criminal should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. This legislation would add a different element to certain crimes and I know as a former prosecutor, make it more difficult and more expensive and, and more prolonged to obtain a conviction, especially when you have to prove an individual's thought processes as an underlying element to the offense. This bill at bottom tries to distinguish between assaults by declaring that if someone assaults and kills his girlfriend because she broke up with him, it's not a federal offense, but if he kills her, because she claimed she wanted to explore her sexual orientation and he became upset and killed her, that would be a federal offense. Senator Hatch offered a complete substitute on Thursday night. It was rejected. His proposal would require uh, that a study be conducted so that actual evidence can be obtained to see if there is a real serious problem with states not prosecuting these matters. For some reason, even though Senator Hatch has been trying to get it passed for quite a number of years. The study has never been conducted, and all proposals for such a study have been rejected. I fear it's because perhaps Mr. Sullivan got it right. It's not so much about the failure of states to prosecute these crimes, but about an underlying uh, idea uh, to pass a symbolic piece of legislation. There is no good reason for such a broad piece of legislation.
To pass it would be unwise. No one believes that individuals should be assaulted because of their beliefs, uh, their gender, or, or their sexual orientation. That type of behavior is unacceptable and should be prosecuted. It has been prosecuted, and I am sure that state and local law enforcement officers will continue to do so. I believe that if my colleagues would study the legislation and think about what we're doing, they would see that this is more unwise and the objections that they've heard have more weight than they had thought initially. It seems like a good idea. Who would want to be against a crime that, that, that says it wants to punish hate? But there are serious matters and constitutional issues, as I noted, from the Civil Rights Commission, from civil rights attorneys like Mr. Nat Hentoff. I think, um, in truth, the Attorney General uh, should have been more balanced in his testimony before the, the Judiciary Committee. He came just pushing this legislation without listening or expressing any concerns. But I do think he should have pointed out that it represents one of the largest expansions of federal law enforcement in history. He should be the first to point out and express that concern and he should not allow politics to uh, drive law in America. So I know most of my colleagues think this is the right thing to do. I wish that I had been able to participate more in the debate before it was a done deal the other night. I was involved at the same time, of course, with the confirmation process. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can watch this legislation, come up with some ideas to curtail its potential for abuse and make it better. But in, in reality, I just want my colleagues to know it's time for us in Congress to step back and question carefully any proposal to create new, more expansive federal laws, criminal jurisdiction uh, that would encroach upon the historic powers of our state and local law enforcement uh, to em enforce the law in their jurisdictions. I thank the chair and we yield the floor. President. Senator from Michigan. Senator